Hi, Dr. Keller here. You had a great question asking, hey, what's representative sample? What sampling error and how are they related? Take a look at our, our population of balls here. There's red ones and green ones. This is a population. And let's say that you or I, we go in and we take uh, two handfuls of uh, these balls. One handful uh, with our left hand, other handful with our right hand. When we pull our hands out of the jar and we look at the balls within our hands, we should see a good mix of red and green balls in each hand. And if we look at both hands and uh, each one has the red and green balls, uh, and it's in the same proportion as what you see in the population, we'd say we have a representative sample. That is, someone could look at the balls that we're holding in our hand, and they could, based upon what they see in our hand, infer what the population is like. Oh, okay, it's a mix of red and green balls, and it looks like it's a fairly even mix. That's the case. It's a representative sample. And sampling error is how much does your sample differ from the population? So the more representative our sample is, the less error there would be. If my if in the population there's 50% green balls and 50% red balls, and I happen to grab, you know, uh, six balls in one hand there, and three are red and three are green, that is a perfectly representative sample. It's just like the population. It's a 50-50 mix. No error at all. Okay, but if you look at the image shown here, <laughs> we see someone who took two handfuls of balls. One handful, they're all red. That's not a representative sample. There's no green balls there, right? So we would say lots of sampling error. Well, that sample does not give you a very good idea of what the population looks like. On the other hand, the person has a single green ball. And again, it's not the number of balls the person has in his or her hand. It's how representative is it of the population. And so there is one green ball. The population has red and green. And in fact, when you look at the hand that has one green ball, you could see it would be impossible to grab a sample of just one ball and for it to be representative. If you grab the green ball, it doesn't show that there's red and green balls. If you grab the red ball, it doesn't show that there's red and green balls. So that sample is not large enough to be representative. The other hand that's all red balls, like you're like, wow, that's a real statistical anomaly. That's extremely unusual. I mean, what's the odds of having a container of red and green balls? You scoop out a whole handful and they're all red, right? That that would be a very non-representative sample. There'd be lots of sampling error, but we also know that wouldn't happen very often. Extremely unlikely. Most of the time when we grab a handful of balls, it'll be fairly close, not perfect, but fairly close to that 50-50 of red and green. And we can use that to get an idea of, of what is actually contained within the population. As um, statisticians, when we go to poll people, to uh, survey people, um, you know, what does the United States think about um, uh, war in Iraq, or uh, what do they think about the next presidential election, who they would elect. Um, we're not going to ask every single person. We're going to randomly select uh, a sample of the United States population. And the idea is that that sample, by looking at that sample, we'll know what's true for the whole population. And the better that sample conveys what's true for the whole population, the more representative it is. The less it conveys what's true of the population, the more error there is. Unlike this particular drawing, we don't often get to see what is true of the population. So these concepts of representative sample and sampling error, they're concepts we work with. Very rarely do we actually get to see both the sample and the entire population and get an accurate measure of just how representative or, or how much error there is. But it's a concept that nonetheless we find useful in our discussions. We talk about different methods that help give us a more representative sample, and we'll be covering that later in class. All right, take care.